death on the corners. Mistakes and saves are for his side, I'm just the coroner. To the yellow journalists that won awards for writing facts. For worldwide web press stories, always calling them black. Civil rights violated, here comes C1-7. And CIA and FBI agents, brethren, felons, with what Brick Brother once heard. Most mores are nerds and study more than if I'm on the road, no biting curbs. No threats of nooses or fighting for survival. Making more than models won't happen, calling us Captain Rival. Inquisitionist governors and secretaries of state got stateless on their tables like rib I think. With no care, blood dripping, they eat blacks rare. Foreigners wearing six point badges, pretending they're heirs to the vastness of state Magri Balaxa. Stainless blood flow past the horse's brow, I swear it's agua. Demons thirst quench, stealing pioneers and organs. Psychiatry, death industry, the stars selling black orphans. And half closed coffins, cause legs are missing, killing state. People cancel, won't even see remission. More lives matter. Other things like black lives don't matter. More lives matter. Other things like black lives don't matter. More lives matter. Other things like black lives don't matter. More lives matter. Other things like black lives don't matter. What system? Not gonna make myself no victim. Run down and kick them off. Educate oneself and slip them. All of the titles are nationality. Strips them. Must grip reality in order to really grip them in this third dimensional illusion. Organized chaos confusion. Stealing your attention. Mental intrusion. Universal law. Declaration of the ancients. I self law and master. From the rooftops to the basements. Hoop these to the spaceship. Ever since all creation. Celestial foundation. Ocean floor to the ranges. To the mountain tip. To the car. Cosmic infinite, basically we are way above the shit In other words, get in tune with spirit Take a breath and accept Mental polarity, gender rhythm, correspondence, vibration, cause and effect Well, Islam never been in this room before. This is the first time. Islam, how are you doing? Wow. Islam, how are you? Uh, um, this man is going to be giving a class tonight. However, I just wanted you all to know this. Your feelings, your thoughts, your ideas about Trump being in. What you need to know is business as usual. Well, first of all, everybody's just so unclear that the president of the United States of America is not the president of the American land or even the United States, which is the representative arm that the more than the natural people kind of have in their representative arm at the time as an interface. But we all up in the U.S.A. stuff, 
And that's the problem. So what is your remedy when it has always been? Know the damn law of the land and enforce it. Because if you listen, listen, you're forced to make changes and everybody looking all over the place and the rest of the world and those who are on your land occupying it. I love the new term that is used all the time with the red and the blue pill called the pilgrim. But that's who they are. They taught you that in school. They are who their foremothers and forefathers are and so are you. And so you have people that say and think we're citizens of the United States of America because that is, let's get it real, their choice. They choose to be so. So if you want to know what's going to happen now that Trump is in office, you can go down that same rabbit hole that you've been going down. You're just going to get your head cut off a little bit faster. That's it, and that's all. Why? Why? Because you know that it's already been said that you, that we more who have been rising in consciousness, right? What did they do when the more started rising in consciousness? They put Obama, who everybody thinks is a black president, but as mama is European, she's a pilgrim too. So therefore, he is not a black man or a Moor in that respect. You're going to have to learn to accept that as real biology. All right? Because it's the truth. Now, what you black, that's international, national law, national law, national law, national law, national law, and uh, what am I looking for? Oh, and international. Because if you're not, if you're a national, you're already international. So if you're making a claim that you're a national, you need to recognize you're already international. Your stuff is international law. Period. So when the war started rising, what did they do? They put Obama with you. Think they don't know what they're doing from before. Do you know that all the voting that was just done was nothing but an opinion? Which means this is which is why it's called the poll. It's a dog and pony show, and everybody's like, well, oh my goodness, this was tough. If he's not the president. And all this means is, you might find that he has more respect for that than what you think. First of all, everything that he's ever done is marked off of, of Moorish culture. Taj Mahal. All of this stuff? You think he doesn't know where that comes? What do you think? What do you think? The world knows. The problem is the people who are here refuse to honor their own mothers and fathers. Just refuse to. But we understand why. Because there's lack of knowledge going into institutions and learning from them. So when you come up and everybody, I don't care whether they were aware of the national status of the people or not, Every discipline you've ever heard is that we need to have our own schools, but nobody listened. Okay, now, here's what I'm saying. When they decoyed you, us, with the uh, Obama, some people actually got comfortable and thought that we had a black president now and all that. That was purposefully done to throw it off. But remember the words of the prophet Noah Jualli in their prophecies. He said, when you're going to have an Asiatic president and or vice president, is a sign of a time for you. Time for you to recognize, to, uh, to rise, called the rise of the Lord. Because think about it for a second. Trump is talking about, yeah, we're going to build a wall and keep him off the land. It's not his own land. <laughs> This sick and sad, 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 sad part, I mean bad part, is that the Aboriginal indigenous people who are those of various copper tone complexions who were found on the continent when they got here, sitting on their behind and won't take this damn yo. It's not a man of an army. It's not a matter of war uh, 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 tactics and things like that. It has nothing to do with you, confessing your own. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's not for you to worship under your own mind tree, which is the family tree. 
It has nothing to do that you have been given. The, the, it has a lot to do with the fact that you've been given enough information to save a whole damn nation, and you won't even save yourself be seen. So we have some misinterpretations out here coming from those statements that is the problem said we have given you enough information to create a nation. Now, I ain't here to say that. So you got people out there trying to create one, which I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. It's this honest to every sister. I don't care how twisted sisters are, because this whole message about force to make changes really starts with her. And that's another thing that has to be accepted and understood. Because I've said before, if all the sun's lined up right now, then we ready. And she's not in the mess. So what happens to the night? So then we're supposed to get rolling on by the victory. Some people think, I'm going to go out and start a nation. You can't do that. The nation is already here in the womb of every woman. And if you don't know that, we're going off half cock. So it may not be all that you think it is, but I'll tell you one thing that it damn sure is. It is time for you to confess from your own tongue. Best believe that because it says even in the King Alfred of people who won't use their intelligence are like stakes on the table. And that's what you, we, we would all be. That's where it's at. Stop playing around. Time to stop playing around. For real. Uh, there's these fears. Oh, well, you know, they're going to make all the Moors and say they're terrorists. I don't give a damn what they say Moors are. You know what you are. This whole country was built on this line. You can find it right in the um, Barbary treaties and in uh, 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 expatriation um, uh, information, which is historical reference, which is the only thing that will change this momentum, is those who find the historical record, meaning knowledge, it tells you that it wasn't built on, on, on Christian values at all. This is not that. So why are you talking about they going to put make all people who are Islamic, which includes, you know, a Muslim, uh, those who are into the Muslim co- uh, customs and stuff, uh, terrorists. Well, they started that with you because you think you're a Christian. That's how bad it is for you when they have the Christian crusades going down and you don't recognize it and want to be saved. They just say, well, now they've extended it across to 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 other lands, to our dressing in other lands, and 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 you know they got a war on that. It's all dog and pony bull crap. Because all every person they deal with, and, and he was just talking with the day, all of them are Islamic. Out of out of this country, they is one of it. They're Muslims. Period. So the mission is to do that from the door. So now we're in the heart of civilization, which is the Americas, North, South, Central, and the adjoining islands. And now they won't come back when they say you are terrorist. This is sickness. This is a sickness. We want to uh, build the wall and keep the Mexicans out. They hung on. They were here before you got here. So now think about it. For the Aboriginal indigenous people to allow this to continue without getting together, and why don't you, pro- why don't you protest, not protest, why don't you get together and, and unite similarly to what they do or all they just shot another brother. They've been shooting them for mothers. They've been shooting your sons and putting them in jail. That's what, how much they care about you. They're showing you because your son is your front line, and they got him in the jail cells unjustly so because they are afraid of him. Always have been afraid of the war. All right? So, so, so why not come together on that fact, on those facts? Not, not that fact like you asking somebody to do something for you, but on the knowledge base where you can come together and unite with information. You see what I'm saying? Because what you should be coming and gathering for, if you ask me, if you're, if, you're going, if you're going to be protesting down the street, you need to be saying, and then we can find a good rhyme if you wish to. All right? Something to the effect, like the, Mex- like the so-called Mexicans here in a Mexum had a sign, we have it on the site, that says, if you think that I'm a foreigner, 
You need to do your history because I am home. Well, that's what you need to be doing. What about that energy? What about letting that be what reigns across the nation? Instead of protesting and asking for something because they shot another brother yesterday when they shooting them all day, every day, for the longest time. What about that? At minimum, at minimum, at minimum do that because that's called being needing each other and needing each other more later and coming together and being forced to do stuff. Because see, all that's going down here is what has already been prophesied. You're forced to make some daggone changes. Make them do 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 that. Just do it. You know what I'm saying? And understand that we're family. Instead of trying to get bits and pieces of information and then running off, that's what needs to be going down. For instance, people trying to figure out how to, I say it all the time because it's the highlight of the times here, um, you know, like they talk about commerce, everything is commercial. Well, the reason that these modern farmers came here and we gave them the right to do so through the treaty and then through the law of the land, the Treaty of Philippines, is so that they could do, in fact, they could do commerce. But instead, we want to jump in the bed with them doing commerce when we're the original merchants on the daggone planet. So we don't get it yet, but that's the truth, and so shall it return to say. Because truth doesn't change, nor does it pass away. But you have them running around talking about building a fence, building a wall. You know, we're going to take it back and take our American country back. Well, they're not so wrong in that we did feed them a portion, a place. We're not trying to say whatever we say to enforce. Stick to the law, enforce the law, do not violate the rights of the people. That's it now. So we're not saying nothing other than that. And the only persons who can say that are the aboriginal indigenous people keep calling themselves Negro, color, and black. And they're not saying it because they all trying to figure out processes to get them out of what they think is slavery. Uh, or, 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 or to void the birth certificate, which is crap because what it says, it says it is. An instrument of proof human trafficking, my goodness, is a bond. But when you make your proclamation, the name correction of proclamation, did you read what that says? It supersedes all of that. You don't need to do nothing but make that claim and then the 9.9 9 of everything except for those things you may have contacted with that you need to go defend or deal with are already void. But yet you want to look for something to make it void, some process to make it void. So that's all that we're saying here. And that it's simply business as usual. Now, Trump does represent at an ultimate level, ultimate level, the truth and the fact that these people are corporations. The United States of America is a corporation. Now you need to, when knowing that, corporations have no parity with the flesh and blood. That's a fact. Which means they have no clarity with you to tell you what to do or what not to do. See, don't, they, 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 they can't go there. But I know that the mental slavery that probably keeps talking that we're in, that mental slavery has it so that when we go to approach for things, we approach from a position of there's an authority there. We know it. We feel it. You know it. You feel it. You feel it every day. That's a part of the mental slavery. Instead of from a position of... Matter of fact, your position and dealing with your matters, whatever they are. You see what I'm saying? That, well, they're doing this and that. Well, write that. Simple. You don't have to write a book. Just state your position regarding the matter. But you go forward with it with the, uh, they're the authority, and, that's, and it's all in the air. They smell it because that's what they do, and they devour you because you have the nerve to come to them as if they were an authority, and they're going to eat you up on it. You see what I'm saying? So getting to that place may not be overnight. It's not overnight. It wasn't overnight for many. It wasn't overnight for me. It wasn't overnight for many. It takes some steady. So some of the stuff that we're giving you is proof positive of the position. But like I said, wearing your belt. And you let me know anyway. You are. Okay. Uh, where's the con- contract? Tonight, what, what we're going to do, we'll just, we're going to hand them out. But I want to introduce it this, this year too. So what we're going to do and what the answer to the problem is, is the same solution that has always been. 
And that is to enforce the Constitution, which is the law, and know that just because, for instance, if Trump said, I am going to, I am going to, uh, uh, change the law. Well, you got to know that he can't change no daggone law. You know that he can't make the laws come down and, and, and redo them. That can't happen. But they can make changes for their corporation all day long. And they're talking as if you're a part of that corporation because you keep acting like you are. You keep becoming a statistical number in their stuff. So that's why I said they we want the birth certificate and this 501C stuff. The 501C we made clear, and Cujo made it clear to me on that show, and that hadn't come to me, is that, is that, um, is that, hello, um, is that when they have a 501C, it is a corporation in the, on a Christian um, corporation, and they are not even allowed to talk civics and stuff like that. So that's why those who have falsely done so in the um, some of the uh, temples that we love to support and go to or whatever, we love that that was working correctly for the people, um, call themselves citizens of the United States of America, although it does mean unity, salvation of Allah in the in the um, in the order or in the association, but some actually do think it means something other than that, and then they enforce um, uh, statutes. Statutes are law. So, with that being said, oh, you want to hand it out your telephone? Oh, he's on it. Okay. With that being said, the remedy. It's either to keep going down the same hole you've been going and get your head cut off just a little bit faster, <laughs> or do what you're supposed to do. This is all going to happen. Business as usual. Trust and believe. No, I'm telling you, Donald Trump is the ultimate corporate partner, and it doesn't matter that he had bankrupt companies. Hell, the United States of America been bankrupt. Been bankrupt. So what y'all talking about? So here's the deal. Do that or enforce the law of the land, which is established to, 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 to keep other citizens, which includes corporate citizens, from molesting you. We are national. And let me clear that up because qualify, some things need qualification. When I say, oh, we're American, or someone says, well, we're American citizens, let's talk about citizenship in real brief. We are nationals. Anything else is a citizen of some sort. If it weren't for the nationals, there would be no need to even discuss citizenship of some sort because it really means membership. Okay? So when you speak of citizenship from a broad place, you have to know that that means there's nationals and then they're citizens of that nation. But you're not the citizen of that nation in that respect. But if it weren't for citizen, you understand what I'm saying? It wasn't for the national. When you, when you talk about citizenship, whatever's on that ship, there's at least four levels of citizenship. But we're the national when it comes to that. That cause is even higher these levels because it's your land. You're of a national domicile. You are not of a quasi-national domicile, which every single 52 union states they're quasi-national. Why are they quasi-national? Because they're already on someone else's land and in someone's nation. So they can't be national. They're quasi. The definition explains it. It's not complicated. So when you're a national, you can't be a member class citizen or live in any of that. This is your national culture. Enforce the law of the land that they cannot change or suspend. If they do martial law, is it in the Constitution? No. They're doing it for themselves, not you. But it's time for you to walk upright, fearless, and independent in your land. Because if you don't, you're going to let this start the police, you'll continue to go on. So when the HMA is going to discuss, and, and, she, and she, we just handed out the Constitution, from the congressional records. Why? Because look, if we, when the modern Europeans dress up stuff, 
when the mind of your sin is dressed up stuff and fix it up and put it on or give it to you, nobody questions where it came from. But as soon as we do it, oh, that ain't the original that come from the website. Put it, made it pretty and everything, you know, with our graphic abilities that we're proud of. I know I am. I've been doing graphics for a minute. And then they want to question it. So, you know what? Well, okay, no problem. We pulled it right from the congressional record, and we also have it on the site. Because that's the only, because that's what our people do. They look for reasons not to be upright, independent, and fearless. That's what they look for. So, like we said last night, um, we're giving it to you straight. No cases. And the other thing is, if anybody did not listen to last night, shall, who listened to last night's broadcast? Okay. Did the sister put on what should have been the State of the Union address for more? Sister Anna A. when she said, was it awesome? It was awesome. It was real. I was like, dang. I, I said that. I said, that should be the State of the Union. And when I say State of the Union, I don't mean corporate union, and I don't mean corporate state. State means condition also. And union means the unity of the Lord once we would just unite because you need each other more. But you're going to need each other more later. The later is upon you. You will be forced to make changes. The forcing to make changes is definitely upon you. And the rest of that stuff is business as usual. And that's what you need to do. Enforce the law of your land. Yes. Oh. All right. So with that, the sister, um, if y'all didn't hear it, y'all need to go back and listen to it because it was awesome. So um, I want to say, and now I introduce the president of the moment. <laughs> Because that's not a title for more. Uh, that's another thing. Neither is prime minister. For all those who think they're following after a prime minister of the Moorish nation, that's not a title for the Moorish nation. Islam. All right, Sister Anna E. Thank you very much. I'm going to read this. <laughs> is there an echo? Did you hear it? There's an echo in this room. That's where the echo came from on the air. Now, but I think I'm unmuted. All right. There might be a, a slight echo here. This is the first time we've been in this room, as Ross Mariah said, and it's uh, quite interesting. I think this is her code, right? All right. How many, how many people, I say this all the time, how many people have read the American Constitution in just? We did a we did an analysis of the American Constitution about two three years ago. It's actually on Sister Standard on Law. Um, the curriculum we did a curriculum that went with it, and we also recorded it on the blog, so you can go back and check it out. We analyzed it real well. What I want to do today is. Uh, Everybody got their copy of the American Constitution? Because you guys, what I would like for you to do is, and for everyone listening at home, pull out your American Constitution. If you don't have it, go to the RV Red Publications website. Sister, send a normal page. I know the um, American Constitution of the Congressional Record is there. This is... Uh, this board needs more cleaning. <laughs> All right. So what I would like you to do is to first read the preamble of the American Constitution because the preamble sets the stage for the players, right? It starts out, we the people of the United States, right? So. We have the United States and then it says in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America, United 
day of America. So, these are the players. Now, and what I would like for you to do with me is to go through and identify in Article 1 who falls under the United States and who falls under the United States of America. Now, what I, I'll, I'll try to show you what I mean. In Article 1, it says all legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States, right? So Congress goes under which heading? United States. Now, um, which shall consent to a Senate and House of Representatives, then it says, the House of Representatives shall be composed of members chosen every second year by the people of the several states, and the electors in each state shall have the qualifications requisite for electors of the most numerous branch of the state legislature. No person shall be a representative who shall not have attained to the age of 25 years and have seven years a citizen of the United States and who shall not, when elected, be an inhabitant of that state in which he shall be chosen. Um, and if we scan through, let's see, Congress of the United States. All right, so let's go to the next page, page 11, because it doesn't tell you anything more about who or what falls under the United States or the United States of America, right? Uh, let's see. Um, when you get to section three, if you scan through that, it doesn't say anything about, okay, section three, clause one, two, three, where it begins the vice president of the United States. So we know the vice pre there should be a vice president for the United States, right? Vice President. There should be a Vice President under the United States. Shall be President of the Senate. So he's also the President. Uh, let's see, Vice President. He's the President of the Senate. All right? Just for reference. So let's see. Then it shall choose their other officers and also a president pro temp in the absence of the vice president or when he shall exercise the office of the president of the United States. So now we know there is supposed to be a president, right, of the United States. So there's supposed to be a president and a vice president of the United States. The Senate shall have, let's see, sole power to try all impeachments when sitting for that purpose. And let's see. I don't recall seeing anything more about who falls under what in Section 3. If you see something that I might have missed, let me know. All right, so... Let's go to page number 12, and um, let's see, under section 7, clause 2, it affirms once again that there is supposed to be a president of the United States, and let's see, I believe that is it. Under Article 1, all right, so then we go to Article 2. Article 2 immediately says the executive power shall be vested in a president of the United States of America. 
So now we know that the United States of America is also supposed to have a president, right? They're both valid. They're both corporations. They're both constructs, all right? Remember, this constitution was drafted so that modern Europeans can come over here and engage in commerce, all right? So they have to have some infrastructure to do that. We already have one. So we helped them to set up an infrastructure that sort of mirrored ours and interfaced with ours but is not ours, all right? In Article 2, it says, uh, let's see, the President of the United States shall be vested with the executive power. Executive power is just power to execute. He shall hold his office during the term of four years and together with the vice president chosen for the same term be elected. So now we know there's supposed to be a vice president, right? under the United States of America. See, this is very enlightening because when we draw this out, you, you ought to be able to see some missing pieces. All right, so now let's go to page 16. And look for anything that's speaking in terms of the United States or the United States of America and any position that they are assigning. Oh, all right. So now, under Article 2, it says the president shall be commander-in-chief of the Army and Navy of the United States and of the militia of the several states when called into the actual service of the United States. Who might they be talking about? Let's back up and read some more so we can figure this out. Each state, okay, let's go back and read, each state shall appoint in such manner as the legislature thereof may direct a number of electors equal to the whole number of senators and representatives to which the state may be entitled in the Congress, but no senator or representative or person holding an office of trust or profit under the United States shall be appointed elector. The electors shall meet in their respective states and vote by ballot for two persons of whom one at least shall not be an inhabitant of the same state with themselves. And they shall make a list of all the persons voted for and of the number of votes for each, which list they shall sign and certify and transmit sealed to the seat of the government of the United States directed to the president of the Senate. Now, the president of the Senate is the vice president of the United States, so that's who they'd be sending it to. The president of the Senate shall, in the presence of the Senate and House of Representatives, open all the cert certificates and the votes shall then be counted. The person having the greatest number of votes shall be the president. I just want to make a notation here. Um, this election that just took place yesterday, right? According to this Constitution, in the voting of the President of the United States of America, the, the envelope is supposed to be opened, if I read this correctly, by the President of the Senate who is the Vice President of the United States. Does anybody know who the Vice President of the United States is? Does anybody know who the President of the United States is? So how was the ballot opened if there is no Vice President of the United States? 
<laughs> the president of the Senate shall in the presence of the Senate and House of Representatives open all the certificates and the vote shall then be counted. Yes. Yeah, look, we're talking about the American Constitution. This is the jour. We're not talking about what they established in 1871. We're talking about what was established in 1791. So that's all that matters, really. Okay. The person having the greatest number of votes shall be the president. If such number be a majority of the whole number of electors appointed, and if there be more than one who have such majority and have an equal number of votes, then the House of Representatives shall immediately choose by ballot one of them for president. And if no person have a majority, then from the five highest on the list, the said House shall in like manner choose the president. But in choosing the president, the vote shall be taken by state. The, the representation from each state having one vote a quorum for this purpose shall consist of a member or members from two-thirds of the state and a majority of all the states shall be necessary to a choice. Mm-hmm. In, in every case, after the choice of the president, the person having the greatest number of votes of the electors shall be the vice president. But if there should remain two or more who have equal votes the Senate, shall choose from them by ballot the Vice President A. The Congress may determine the time of choosing the electors and the day on which they shall give their votes, which day shall be the same throughout the United States. No person except a natural-born citizen or a citizen of the United States at the time of the adoption of this constitution shall be eligible to be to the office of president. All right, so I want to just make a note right there. No person except a natural born citizen or a citizen of the United States at the time of the adoption of this constitution shall be eligible to the office of president. Now, um, I think eight years ago when Obama got into office, everybody was debating what where well, you know what where's this birth certificate from coming from? But according to this it doesn't matter, right? Because the only people that matter in terms of being eligible to be a president is at, at in seventeen ninety one you were born here. Right? And then after that, like because, of course, you know, let's say people born in 1791 had a lifespan of 50. After 50, you're talking about people who became, who became U.S. citizens. So that would mean that Obama qualifies, right, because he became a citizen, Right. Right. Modern Europeans. Right. Only the only people who can vote under the United States of America is modern Europeans. Obama, I, it, see, the, the, mel, the amount of melanin you have in your skin does not determine your nationality. Your mother determines your nationality. His mother is a modern European, therefore he is a modern European. That is the only way that he could ever have become president of the United States of America. That's the only way. There has never since the United States of America has been established, there has never, ever, ever been an Asiatic president, nor will there ever be, because the United States of America was established for modern Europeans. If you want to be president on this land and you are Asiatic, you can only be the president of the United States. 
not the United States of America. But nobody has been sitting in the seat of presidents of the United States since we uh, adjourned in Senadia in 1861. That seat has been empty. So has the vice president of the United States. That seat has been empty since 1861 when we walked out of Congress. Congress has all the valid seats of Congress have been empty since 1861 because the Congress is made up of more. Modern Europeans can send people to represent them, but they are not the Congress, all right? All right, so the Congress may determine the time of choosing, okay, no person, neither shall any person be eligible to that office who shall not have attained the age of 35 years and been 14 years a resident within the United States. Notice they said resident within the United States, not the United States of America. In case of the removal of the president from office or of his death, they're talking about the president of the United States of America. Article 2 is talking about the United States of America. Article 1 is talking about the United States. All right? So it is the president of the United States of America who would be the commander in chief. Uh, think of E I. No, it's chief. I think that's great. All right, so let's look at the next page, page 17. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, um, two presidents, three, you shall come back. All righty, the president and us. United States. Okay, now we get to Article 3, which is on page 17. And if you read Article 3, Article 3, I think, is really interesting. Article 3 begins, the judicial power of the United States shall be vested in the one Supreme Court. So where does the Supreme Court reside? Under which under which category? All right. Now, can anybody tell me what is significant about this? The judicial powers of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court. What is significant about that? What is significant about the Supreme Court falling under the title or category of the United States as opposed to the United States of America? What is significant? No. No. Okay. Reflect today on the Supreme Court. Huh? Well, no, there's only one Supreme Court. There's only the one Supreme Court, and when this Constitution is talking about the, the Supreme Court, it's talking about the Supreme Court of Washington, D.C. Any other Supreme Court, I don't care, any other court that is calling itself a Supreme Court, you need to just ignore that because that's false. It doesn't even exist. Unless you can get something from that court, see what? Well, well, I don't even. You don't even need to do that, okay? Because I'm going to reread this. The judicial powers of the United States shall be vested in one supreme court. Did it say several supreme courts? No, it said one supreme court. So if there is some other building calling itself a Supreme Court other than the one in Washington, D.C., that's false. Yes, that's the hate, Switzerland. 
Yes. All right. So, is there is there a world court? Is there? Yes. There is a world court. The world court is in The Hague, and that's Switzerland. All right. So, this I, I, up, up in this area, especially this right here, ought to be a great revelation. Correct? Right. Because up here, I think there's supposed to be a Supreme Court on every street corner. Every building you go into around here is called a Supreme Court, right? So now when you start asking, well, what kind of court is that? Is that a county court? Is that a superior court? Is that a, is that a district court kind of court? Is that nobody knows because they call all of them Supreme Court. But they're not. I can tell you a surefire way that you will know if you are in a, a municipal corporation calling itself a court. You want me to tell you? You want me to tell you? How do many people know? There's one, one giveaway that lets you know if you are in a municipal court or a municipal tribunal. One giveaway. What is Yes. No. 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 It just says what? Find it? No. Let me tell you. No arraignments go on in a Supreme Court or a true state court. There is no arraignment going on at all, ever. Not in that building. If there is an arraignment going on, you are in a municipal tribunal. And what you need to pay attention to is, I wish that I, um, I was in, I was in, I was having a, I was in a meeting, uh, a hearing meeting, right? And the, and the hearing officer, because that's what's going on. You're in hearing, you're having a hearing, and they will even tell you, come on back here for a hearing, right? They don't say, they don't, they don't, they interchange hearing and court, because most people don't even know what the difference is, right? Right? Because we haven't been educated. We don't know anything about law. We don't know nothing about what our responsibility is as a civilian, all right? We don't, because we don't know law and we don't know, because this is the only law right here, this right here. This is the only law. It is called the American Constitution. It is the supreme law of the land. There is no other law. Everything else is statutes, ordinances, and codes. This is the only law. How many people know this? You know it? How many people know it's good? See, that you've got to know this good. Because as long as you don't, they will tell you, like they tried to tell me, oh, well, because I went into this um, meeting room to have a discussion with this hearing officer, and I let him know that I have a civil case against you and this particular issue in the state court, and he said to me, I'm confused because this is a state court. I didn't even bother to entertain that discussion because he was doing arraignment and he was interchanging traffic and um, uh, traffic, domestic violence, family matters, all in the same setting. So automatically I know this is not a state court. But, see, this is where you got to do your research because what I found out was that that building initially was marked as a county court. But I believe people was calling them out. And so they abolished all county courts. They abolished all county courts. But business must go on as usual. So they called it the Superior Court Building. I took a picture of it. It's called the Superior 
court building, but it is not a superior court. It is just called a superior court building. (laughs) Well, you know, there's a saying, he who has eyes to see will see, and he who has ears to hear will hear. Now, my job is not to make them change the name of the building. My job is not to educate anybody. If you're sitting in that seat, you're supposed to know the law. We're not there to discuss what is and is not the law because you're saying that I broke the law. So it is your, it's on you to explain to me how I did that and how is it that you're the one that's the making a demand of me and that I'm supposed to pay it or give it to you? Well, what is our relationship? What is our relationship that allows you to have that type of power over me? See, we use words like jurisdiction, which means right words, or um, uh, jur- yeah, jurisdiction, which means right words, but I'm trying to get it so that you understand in just layman's terms. That's like going into Walmart and you walk through the door and they say, I need you to give me $75. Well, why? You are, it's no matter why. It doesn't matter why. I told you and you need to give it up to me. No, you need to explain that. <laughs> you need to explain that to me. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows of the Constitution, but few know it. The whole Constitution is written to protect the people's liberty. That means that no corporation can come and tell you, flesh and blood being, what you can and cannot do. How many people, and and see, here's the thing. I'm telling you, no corporations can come and tell you what you can and cannot do, right? Now, how many people in here has ever gotten some kind of traffic demand, traffic infraction, ticket, whatever? All right. Now, on that ticket, does it? What? Who does it say is making the demand? What? State, city. Municipality, fiction, corporation, right? If it's a corporation making a demand, that's absolutely unconstitutional. A hundred percent unconstitutional. Because here's the thing. When did you violate the state, the, the city, the municipality, whatever they're calling themselves at any given time? When did you... When did you do that, and how can you? They don't even exist. It doesn't even exist. It's like you wrote, you, look, all corporations are started on paper. That means that they are only paper. So how did you injure the paper? But you laughing. But they play us every day because we don't understand that. Very simply stated, they play us every day. Any one of you, especially you sons, walk out that door and run down the street and let one of those New York employees see you running. They will turn on the red lights and follow you. Am I right? Am I right? And then they will want to know, why are you running? And if you say none of your damn business, they will give you some sort of a demand for income talking about you breached the peace or you were a resisting arrest or you were refusing to answer an officer, and then they will give you a ticket that will say, this, you injured the city of New York. But when did the city of New York get behind a steering wheel and chase you down? <laughs> well, it is organized crime. 
time. It's called racketeering. That's what it is. It is racketeering, and it is being played on the Aboriginal and Indigenous people of this land every day, and it's played very well because the majority of us, we have killed ourselves to go to these municipal corporations, instituted so-called schools, and it is not there. there, there it, is, it would be foolish, okay? It would be foolish for a thief that's trying to steal from you to teach you how to not allow him to steal from you no more. So for us to think that we're going to send our children to these institutions so that they can have a better life than we had is insane. So because we do that, they look at us and they say, well, these are insane people. We might as well continue robbing them. And this is what they do every single day. So now let's get back to who is who and what is what under this Constitution. All right, so we are, that was Article 3. Let's look at. Uh, Article 4. Article 4. All right. Full faith and credit. Congress may give general law, citizens of each state, person. All right. So let's see. I don't see anything more that. Let's go to page 19. If you see something that I missed, let me know. We got the Congress. We already know what. What where Congress falls? Okay, the, uh, 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 section four, section four of Article four. It says the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion. And on application of the legislature or of the executive, when the legislature cannot be convened against domestic violence. So that means that the United States is supposed to be guaranteeing to any of the states of the United of, of America a Republican form of government, right? So that means that this right here is supposed to be a republic, right? That's the same thing about a democracy, right? But the United States is supposed to be making sure that that is guaranteed, right? Well, who's sitting under the United States? Anybody? Does anybody know who the president of the United States is? What about the vice president? What about the Supreme Court? The Supreme Court is supposed to fall on the United States, which means by default, the Supreme Court is supposed to be staffed with more. Why? I'll tell you why. Under Article 3, let's go back. Under Article 3, Section 2, it says the judicial power shall extend to all cases in law and equity arising under this Constitution, the laws of the United States, and treaties made of which shall be made under this treaty to all cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls, to all cases of admiralty and maritime jurisdiction. And here is what applies to us to controversies to which the United States shall be a party, to controversies between two or more states, between a state and citizens of another state, between citizens of different states, between citizens of the same state claiming lands under grants of different states, and between a state or the citizens thereof and foreign states, citizens, or subjects. So now, 
we talked about these employees of these municipal corporations giving you a demand for income, right? And they say that the state is the one that's bringing the charge, right? Am I right? So according to the Constitution, it says, to controversies to which the two or more states between a state and a citizen of another state, between citizens of different states, between citizens of the same state claiming land under grants of different states and between a state or the citizen thereof and foreign state citizens or subjects. So if the state is a party, this automatically is supposed to be referred to the Supreme Court of the United States. Why? Why would it be? Uh, uh, um, why would it go to uh, uh, the Supreme Court of the United States? Because it's an issue of diversity. You have two nations at odds. If you're a Moor, proclaim, declare, declare. If you're a declared Moor, you are of a nation other than the United States of America. If you are a modern European, you are of the nation that was established called the United States of America. That is a controversy between a citizen of a state and a foreign citizen or, or, or subject or actual national. So that automatically brings you to the Supreme Court. But the Supreme Court is supposed to be under the United States. But there's nobody sitting in the seats of the United States. Not even the Supreme Court. That's the Supreme Court in Washington, D.C. Go and look at who is sitting in the seat of the, of the Supreme Court today. Now, don't look at their complexion. All right, because even if they are melanated or, or carbon based, meaning they're a more, they're unconscious. So, what program are they pushing? United States of America. There is no provision in the American Constitution for Supreme Court under the United States of America or staffed by citizens of the United States of America because citizens of the United States of America cannot determine issues of diversity. They're foreigners. Foreigners cannot make a determination on issues of diversity because the diversity is that you got two people of two different nations. So far and those and so foreigners can't be a part of that decision making. Only the nationals can. All right, so let's go back to Section 5. Article 4. Did I do? I did 4, so I'm looking for Article 5. Did you bring out earlier and 4 and this was the Republicans? Yes, I did. Republic, United States of America, is, then I said, United States of America is supposed to be a public, a republic. And who's supposed to guarantee that? United States, right? But there's nobody sitting in the seats of the United States, and that's how they can bring in the democracy and get away with it, because we are the United States. We're the ones that are supposed to be guaranteeing that there exists as a Republican form of government, and we're supposed to be the ones guaranteeing that people are safe from domestic violence. It says it right in here. It means the violence on this land, homeland. Yes. I just wanted to say one thing that it means. Mm -hmm. the, the reason, if you like to do, wait, wait, wait. The reason I hold it up. No, I have Um, 
They're playing that game. I'm not echoing now. Yeah, I know. I took this off. Microphone. Um, they're playing that game um, because they know you don't know. And they know they can act. They're actors. They truly are actors. And they can act all that out because people, nobody's going to do anything or say anything. All of them, even when they say, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, they're talking about pushing a democratic form. We're talking about form of government. So your code, when you hear them say, this democracy, including Obama, all right, because that's what they're working for, um, then that's, that's where you know that it's not. Uh, they violate you. And, and domestic violence means, that, like she said, if this is your home and somebody's coming to infringe upon you and violate your rights, that's domestic violence. All right, so let's look at um, Article 5, 6, and 7, and that's the end of the article. Um, but I don't see anything more that talks about the position. What? He's saying if you want to prove even further that... Oh, why did you want us to read this? Why, why, why? Yeah. They appoint somebody to as president to tell a president to be elected. Okay. When we walk down and say that he's going to be elected. Okay, yeah. That's what happened. Who would be no, appointing? No, they did not. Not in San Andreas. Yeah. Because this the is... The inability of the president to discharge his office. No, but we won't. Yeah, but the president, the president was able to discharge his office. But when, when Congress walked out, in San Andreas, everything... In 1833, 1933. All right, but I don't want to talk about that because that'll just that'll banker something about the bankruptcy is another class because that got a lot of different tentacles. Plus, you got to look at um, the bankruptcy went down in 1933, but you got to look at the, the discussions that were going on in 1932, specifically by McFadden to get a feel for what was going on. Because 1933 and what the prophet was doing goes together. So, yeah, so we have to, that's a lot of, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's another class. <laughs> but let's look at Article 5, 6, and 7. And just, if you see, I don't see any other, um, position established. Um, if you do, let me know. I don't see any other uh, positions of employment established in this Constitution. Right? If you see something, let me know. I didn't see. I, I cruised five, six, and seven. Um, and I didn't see any. Anybody see any that I might have missed? Because there's only seven articles. That's it. The Bill of Rights, that protects the people. So I'm not even going to go there because that doesn't talk about the employment position because that's what these are. These are jobs. All right? These are jobs. These are the only seats sanctioned by the American Constitution. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you see anything in the Constitution about a prosecutor? Any prosecutor? Any district attorney? Any attorney? Well, let me talk about the attorneys for a minute here because that's most interesting. We talked about that, discussed that last night. It's in the original 13th Bill of Rights, but it's also in Article 1. Section 9, Clause 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Clause 7, it's right above 
Section 10 says, No title of nobility shall be granted by the United States, and no person holding any office of profit or trust under them shall, without the consent of Congress, accept of any present emolument that would be money, payment, credit, office, or title of any kind, whatever, from any king, prince, or foreign state. Now, everybody has heard this word attorney, right? Oh, I probably spelled that wrong, but who cares? Now, do you also know that attorney also means esquire? Yes, but you got to know why. Esquire is an English typo. All attorneys are esquires. You may, how many of you have ever seen any document filled out by a attorney? And on the end of their name, they have E S Q. Esquire. This is America. This is American law. This is American soil. That's an English title. An English title on American soil and American law does not belong. So now when you go into these so-called courts and you come upon attorneys, you're looking at esquires. Are you in a lawfully seated court of, Amer- on Amer- of America, of American law? No. So now how can they ever have jurisdiction? Meaning, how can they ever have power over you? How can they tell you what you can and cannot do? The only reason that they can do this is because the vast majority of us know nothing about the law. It doesn't matter because the law rules everything. It doesn't matter because, see, if you're dealing with property, well, it's supposed to all be about property. Well, and see, and that's where the law comes to the rescue of the people because the people can never be property, and it says that right here in the footnote of this Constitution found right in the um, congressional record. Let me see if I can find it real quick. It's um, on page 13. And it's, uh, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, ch- 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 here we go. All right. Um, it's almost near the bottom. And it starts out person. Thank you. Persons are not the subject of commerce. Persons are not the subject of commerce and not being imported goods, they do not fall within the meaning founded upon the Constitution of a power given to Congress to regulate commerce and the prohibition of the state for imposing a duty on imported goods. Now, but you have to understand the history of this, this most amazing document. You have to understand what was going on, what led up to them drafting up this is supposed to be our guide right here. This is supposed to let you know that this is, this is what is, but it also tells you what cannot be. You got people talking about, well, I'm going to go to the district attorney. Uh, sorry, not on American soil. You are going to go and make a complaint to the prosecutor. Sorry, not on American soil. Well, I'm going to go to the police department. Sorry. Not on American soil. I'm going to go to the FBI, the CIA, the IRS. Sorry, not on American soil. These are not agencies sanctioned by the American Constitution. They are not specified in this document. Therefore, they are reserved for the people. The Ninth Bill of Rights, 9 and 10. (laughs) <laughs> the 
The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Ten, Bill of Rights on page 21. And also 10, 9 and 10. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Congress, I mean, so by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Do you see that? 9 and 10? This is why you got to know this Constitution, honey, because it is the bomb. <laughs> Did you see it? Hold on. Okay, this is nine, the enumeration, and this is ten, and then it's over here. All right, and then you have, uh, hold on, nine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got nine here and ten, and that goes concludes over here. All right. So this is your ninth and tenth bill of rights. They call them amendments, but they're bills of rights. Always call them bills of rights because they are your rights. They are secured. They're not given to you. They are secured for you because they are given to you from your Creator. Not from any man, your creator, all right? Unalienable, inalienable. Unalienable and inalienable are things that cannot be sold, cannot be bought, sold, or transferred. I don't know if you have, when you get a chance, go home. Open up your Black Law Dictionary, people listening over the air. Open up your Black Law Dictionary. Look up unalienable. Unalienable will lead you right to inalienable. Unalienable, inalienable means cannot be bought, sold, or transferred. Bought, sold, or transferred. Bought, sold, or transferred. All right? Bought, sold, or transferred. All right? So what we, what we as a people need to comprehend is that, for example, your right to travel, they're trying to sell it to you. Right? You got to pay to travel. It's unalienable and inalienable, right? Yeah. Absolutely. What, what, now, now, I want you to comprehend the whole passport thing because it's a big fraud. But you have to know what, what does passport mean. Look up the definition of passport in your Black Law Dictionary. Passport in the Black Law Dictionary is talking about the passing of a ship. It's right there. They're not even trying to hide it, but they guarantee that the people are not going to open up a book and read it to know. This is what they know. Especially our people. And I have to say, especially you sons. You guys have been so discouraged as you were coming through those um, institutions established by the municipal corporations. They so discouraged you from reading that many of you can't get information unless it's in a DVD. It's not, I'm not, I'm not trying to make fun of you, but because I understand. My children went to these institutions, and they went in excited about learning, and it went in, and they were five, six, seven. They're catching them young, five, six, seven. You go in excited about learning. How many people have children? When they were young, they asked you questions all the time. I remember my youngest daughter, my, um, her older sister said, Ma, can you please take her with you? I said, why? She said, because she won't stop asking questions. Right? Today they don't like asking questions because they've been so discouraged by these, um, these um, uh, institutions established by the municipal corporation, and they went in heavy with the sun. Yeah. 
Well, absolutely, in that sense. No, it's not stupid. That's why they were established. See, you have to look at the history of those institutions. We never used to send our children to those institutions. Our children were the brightest children on this land because they were taught at home. They, no, they were taught at home because the grandma and the grandpa stayed in the house. And we had two, three generations under one roof. Now we have adopted the modern European ideology, and we don't want our we, we're farming our grand our, our our parents, the grandparents, out the convalescent home and adult daycare, right? And and we're and we're not taking care of them, and then we're farming our children out to the municipal corporation. And so they're sending in proposals to the federal government saying, hey, we're providing the service, so give us some money. And so they're getting money, and they're ruining your children. Because a lot of the people that they send there to supposedly teach are not qualified to be there, number one, don't have the right disposition to even be around a young child. All right? They don't have, they don't have the patience. They don't have the wherewithal. They don't have the disposition. Yet that's what we do. And it's a piece of cake for us to start establishing our own educational system. Really, it's not difficult at all. The prophet said that we're going to need each other more than ever before. That means that, sisters, y'all need to group up. You need to group up. You need to find out who's working first shift, who's working second shift, who's working third shift. The third shift mothers, your children need to be hanging out. You need to be uh, uh, teaching the, 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 the mothers that are working first shift. And don't tell me oh, I got to come home and go to sleep because I know plenty of people, myself included, work third shift, get off, you never go to sleep. You never go home and go to sleep. You might go to sleep about 11 or 12 o'clock. Well, guess what? Your child can take a siesta at 11 and 12 o'clock, and y'all all can sleep together. It's not difficult. You're cooking. You're cleaning. You're doing laundry. You're doing bills. Those children can help you do all of that and learn real-life situations. Because involved in all of that is reading, arithmetic, um, decision-making, critical thinking, all of that is embodied in what you do every day to maintain the house, and that's how we used to learn. And then in the afternoon, in the late evening, if there was a son who was even an electrician, because everybody had a side job, if you worked as an electrician in the day, you had a couple of clients in the evening, right? <laughs> if you was a plumber, same thing. If you was a mechanic, same thing. So in the evening, to give the mothers a break, you send the children to whomever they are inclined to go to. You got people who play the piano. I know when I was growing up, everybody had a piano in their house, some kind of piano. Or you knew somebody who had a piano. So you sit, And I was sent to somebody's house who had a piano, and I learned to play the piano and gave my mother a break. She sent all four of us. And she had a two-hour break. At least once a week. This is not difficult to establish. We did this before. Public schools were never established to teach the children anything except to replace the factory workers whose parents were currently working in the factories, and those factory workers were not up. All right? You have questions? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. And here's the thing. Um, we could do that. Look, um, if, if, we're, if we're working at, down on whatever they call the fancy area up here and we're taking care of the modern Europeans, we're going to go home. All right? So you might be the first shift worker. Right? So now... If the second or the third shift mother is going to work, then you take her children. We don't have to depend on um, daycare programs. We can do that amongst ourselves. 
Yes, we can. And our children will be a lot better off for it. The only reason that you have these institutions here existing today is because we send our children there. And so every end of the school year, they do a head count, and they send it, and they get the finance. Before the next school term even begins, they have already been paid. Already been paid. Because none of them, look, they, they, none of them are, they are not providing a product or a service. All right? They're not producing, they're not producing a product or a service. So how are they getting this funding? How are they getting, you know, you know what, what the, the, Many of these municipal corporations, how many people around here um, have a home? Have a home? Anybody have a home? You ever thought, do, y'all, do they um, send y'all tax bills for the home? Y'all get property taxes? Property taxes? Have you ever looked at anybody's property tax? You know that they're billing you, taxing you to provide for a school that they get federal dollars to provide for, that, thank you, double dipping. It's more than double dipping. It's triple dipping. I don't know how they do it up here, but I know up north. If you, for example, live, um, where are we? Say, where, this is Manhattan. Okay. If you live in Manhattan, but you send your child to Brooklyn, all right? If they find out that you sent your child to Brooklyn, all right, you have to, they make you pay Brooklyn whatever the school, so-called school tuition is that they spent, already received the money for because they did a head count. They make you pay back whatever money was to, to um, Brooklyn, to Brooklyn, all right? Now, here's the thing. Brooklyn it's taxing people and getting funded. They're getting federal dollars. And if they find out that you really belong in Manhattan, they're going to get income from the mother. And if you don't pay it, they will put you in prison and take your child. That's triple dipping. Because that's all they have to do is send the money to either Manhattan or send it back to the Fed. But they're not going to send the money back. No. They're going to keep the money and extort it from the mother. And that is criminal. That's fraud. That's triple dipping. But no, that, look, and I don't know how they do it. Do they, do they make you sign a residency form? A residency form? Do you know that in the in the federal guidelines they cannot they cannot use residency as a way of accepting or denying you? Do you know this? In the federal guidelines, and do you know if they do that, you can report them to the feds and they will stop the money until it is resolved. People don't know how much power they have. They sit here whining. These people have submitted a proposal, and they have said that we, since you have not decided to present a program for the education of your children, we have. This is what they've done. And so the fact, since they didn't get no proposal from us, they said, okay, here's, here's, you can get X amount of dollars per head count. Mhm. And so you go to these these um, municipal corporation institutions they call schools, and you look at how many how many children they got crammed into one classroom, and now you know why, because it's per head count. And and they don't even necessarily have to prove that they are educating the children. They just have to prove that the children are coming. And so our people send the children because they don't really care. And I'm not beating up on mothers, but look, at some point, we got to take responsibility. And the only one that can take responsibility is the mother 
or the father. I'm not going to discount it because I know a couple, a couple, couple sons that are educating their children greater than any so-called advanced college today run by modern Europeans. So I'm not discounting the son, but you got to be on it. That's got to be your whole life. You got to be dedicated to that because it ain't no joke. These children are hungry for information. They will keep you running. So you better be ready for the task. (laughs) Don't take it up if you're not going to complete the task because you only discourage the child. So somebody's got to run with it. It's got to be either the mother or the son. But somebody's got to run with it. You can't spend your day trying to just get a break from the children. Put them to bed at 6 and 7 o'clock like we used to and get your break then. That's what we used to do. That's how my mother got a break. 6, 7 o'clock, we was in bed, whether you wanted to sleep or not. <laughs> That's how it was. All this. And, and these games, these games, these computer games that they got the children addicted to, you need to put those away. Because they are, have you looked at some of these games? Then that's called subliminal programming. Subliminal programming. And, 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 mo- and it's so un- unfortunate because most of the young little boys, the, the computer games are very violent, very violent. And that's the subliminal programming that's going right to the cranium at a very young age. So this is the, <laughs> let's go back to our, our job under the United States and the United States of America. Now, why is this so sparse? You might look at this and, you be, and you're thinking, well, it's not much to running the government. That's right. It's not supposed to be much. In this seat, there's supposed to be, whoop. <laughs> it, it, it originally was supposed to be 12 jobs as a Supreme Court justice. It might be nine jobs now. I don't know. It's, it's supposed to be 12. It might be nine. But let's say 12, right? That's 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 jobs, right, for the United States and two for the United States of America. That's 15, 15, 17. We can afford to pay that. We can. We can afford to pay that. We can, you know, we can, because we have to submit taxes so that our infrastructure can continue as well. And they can too. This is all that the Constitution sanctions. That's it. There is nothing else. There's no prosecutor. There's no district attorney. There's no uh, IRS. There's no Social Security Administration. There's no FBI. There's no CIA. There's no police. None of that is sanctioned by the Constitution. None of it. So when you look at it, you see that the people are being extremely overtaxed, overburdened. The Constitution is for the people to enforce, not the, not the public servants who are paid to do their job. These people are paid to do a job. And since there is nobody sitting in this seat, these seats are empty. All right? This seat is, has been filled. You got um, today is Trump, and then I don't know who his vice president person is. Who? Whatever. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Um, but, but this is all that the Constitution sanctions. Now, because the Congress adjourned in Encinadilla in 1861, there has been no new laws written since 1861. Everything that has been written has been a statute. Now, a statute, mm-hmm, a statute, 
to administer the law. So, when they come at you with a statute, the question should be, what is the law? That <laughs> the statute administers. Right? Now, many people have an issue with their right to travel on the land. Now, the statute that is relative to the right to travel is Title 49. The law, let me see if I can find it real quick. I should have Googled, but uh, the law, and it's in here, it says that Congress has the power to regulate interest. That's the law. Uh, da, 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 da. It's got to be in Article 1 because that's talking about Congress. Mm, 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 mm. All right, but it's in here. I saw it. The law that Title 49 administers is that Congress has the right to regulate interstate commerce. It's set, set where? Page 13. To regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with the Indian tribes. To regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states. It's an interstate commerce. But we'll go with that. Um, the law of Congress can regulate interstate commerce. And Title 49 was originally uh, written in 1887, and it was the Interstate Commerce Act. Title 49 falls under the Interstate Commerce Act. Title 49 has your registration and driver's license safety program. This is the statute. It is administering Congress' right to regulate interstate commerce. This does not apply to the people. It applies to corporations. That would include railroad, um, aviation, um, trucking, and um, automobile manufacturers. That's it. This is what Title 49 is all about. And they trade, they change this, they change this, and the top title of this is now Transportation, and under it is Interstate Commerce. But they're counting on people to never do the research, study, and know. They're, 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 they're so counting on people to never read this amazing document called the American Constitution, 1791. It has seven articles, ten amendments. The original 13th Amendment came in under Congress adjourned in Encinitia in 1861. So you have ten Bill of Rights 
11, 12, and 13 affirms what was already written. But they're, 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 they affirm it very strongly. Now, what makes this interesting is this infrastructure simple. The reason it is simple is because <laughs> the reason it is simple is because um, these people, your, your, your vice president and your president and, and members of the Congress, or actually your president and vice president on both sides, they're supposed to be able to go and engage in commerce with other nations around the world. Remember that they came over here to engage in commerce. They didn't, and then they did not. Remember, modern Europeans came over here as the original slaves. They worked as slaves for the British Moors, and the British Moors treated them horrendously. And so when they, they became friends with the Moors over here, and we agreed to assist in freeing them from that enslavement, all right? That happened in 1774. 1774 was the beginning of the talk with the Moors so that they can be free to continue to uh, work these companies that were established by the British Moors. British. 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 T-I-S. Brute. Yeah, they were called, well, they're British Moors. They were called British Moors because they were so horrendous. They treated the modern Europeans so terrible. Terrible. That, I mean, it was, if you ever want to get an idea of how the Moors of Great Britain treated modern Europeans, watch the series The Tudors. No, it's four seasons. I, I, I ordered the DVDs because I was just, see, when you have certain keys and you watch some of these, you know what you're seeing. Like, for example, um, uh, the Tudors, it's chronicling Henry VIII. Henry VIII, most people don't know, was a war. Of course, they whitewash him and have a lot of Europeans playing him in the series, the Tudors, but he's a war, melanated. Or, Henry the Eighth, yes, he is a Moor. That's why he was married to his first wife, who was, um, I think, it's Catherine of Argonne. She was a Moor. She was she was the blood relative of um, the Pope and uh, Isabel and Ferdinand of Spain. So he didn't. He although he, she was a Moor, he couldn't. He wouldn't dare kill her. Are you kidding me? Look, when you watch the Tudor, they show you that Great Britain was in a very tenacious position. They said they had the wars of what they call Italy on one side, and then you had the wars of Spain on another side, and then you had the wars of France here. And they would gang up on the brutish wars. Of course, you had the Moors of what they call Russia as well. Because, see, Henry married the daughter of one of the czars of Russia who is a Moor. You can tell who was a Moor and who was a commoner. Anne Boleyn was a commoner. That's why he was able to chop her head off, because she was a modern European. She was a modern European, and that's why Elizabeth is called the Virgin Queen, because no Moorish family was going to marry their firstborn son to a bastard. A commoner is a bastard. It means that you are uneligible to sit on any throne, any noble position. You can't ever take any of those positions because you're not of the noble family. And that's why no, in the series, and, this, and some of that history is factual. 
And some of it is fictitious, but much of it is on point. So when Henry decides to marry Anne Bolin, a commoner, modern European, he takes her to France to meet the French king, the Dauphin, and he introduces her as Anne, Queen of England, and the French king totally ignores her and has a conversation, continues having a conversation with him because he knows. He knows. And then he, he was trying to hook up Elizabeth with the first son of France, and they was like, I don't think, not the first one. You can have a second or the third, but not the first one. <laughs> no, you can't do that. <laughs> That's why Elizabeth is called the virgin queen. She's not really virgin. But she can never have a noble firstborn son as her mate because no one will mix their blood with a commoner. So it's called mix. It's not necessarily a mixing of the blood because what it does is if she was to marry her child, see, they know true biology. Her child, which is a bastard, would then be eligible to take on the throne, not having it. Elizabeth? Elizabeth who? Oh, I don't know. I have to go back. I have to go back. No, Elizabeth the first. She was a commoner. Her mother was Anne Boland. Yeah. So that's why she can never, she couldn't, she, she never married because nobody would marry her. And that's why um, they said um, they tried to marry her to the king of France. Was it king of France? Yes, because um, Mary B was running the show. And she said, look, I have you marry my nephew. You know, you can marry him. And because Elizabeth was trying to find an ally, because England or Great Britain was at a very, at a, a vulnerable place. They were broke, and everybody was looking to take over Great Britain because there was no heir. Elizabeth was, doesn't count. And when you watch, have you ever seen the movie Elizabeth? You should watch that movie, Elizabeth. A lot of people, they don't watch these things because they think that Elizabeth and George was modern European. Elizabeth was a modern European, but you have to watch that movie, Elizabeth, because everybody was trying to kill Elizabeth because her ass was not supposed to be sitting on that phone. Everybody. They said the Pope was sending assassins. The Pope. The Pope. <laughs> All right? Everybody was sending an assassin. And at the end of the movie, Elizabeth, she cut chops off a vast number of people's heads that was found out that there was this huge plot to kill her and put Norfolk, who was a noble moor, in her place because she was a bastard. They've been telling our history, but because we've been mentally conditioned to think that, oh, you know, that's that modern European crap. I don't want to know about that. We don't watch it. Well, they, that, one of, they always put modern Europeans to play us because they try to take over our history. Look at Cleopatra, played by Elizabeth Taylor with a slight tan. All right? And from we brave, all right, uh, 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 um, Cleopatra was never that light, all right? She was never that light. And, you know, yeah, she was great, but she was no modern European. Here's the one big, big deciding factor that lets you know that Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Taylor was the wrong one to play Cleopatra. They're in what they call... Egypt, right? Back in the day when the sun was closer to the earth, temperatures are 97 in mid at midnight, and she's that light? <laughs> 97 at midnight, all right? So that means in the daytime, it's a lot hotter. No sea. 
evergreen green, just desert. And she's that right? Jesus. The, the way they to take, to take Jesus. Jesus was walking across the desert and was lily white with blonde hair and blue eyes. Now, if you walk across the desert with blue, blonde hair, it gets what? And your skin gets what? Walking across the desert? When he walked from Bethlehem to Nazarene or something like that, that boy should have been really dark. But there was never any Jesus because Jesus is code for justice. But there was a Yahshua. But nobody talks about Yahshua. There's no history promoted about Yahshua. But if, if you go and look it up, it's there. All of this information. show up because justice will show up because as an Asiatic, you're supposed to be low wondering how long we are not having our presidential and vice president elections for our United States of America. That's what you need to be wondering and calling on Jesus about. You should not be, I'm sorry, you need to be wondering why we are not having our President and Vice President elections for the United States, the United States, the United States, not the United States of America. That contract was established for modern Europeans, and you sitting here talking about black folks die to be able to vote. No, we always had the right to vote. We just needed the candidate for the president and the vice president of the United States. Read the Constitution and you will find the truth there. So we let it die. We might have been dying to enforce this because when they tell the story, they never tell it right. All right? We might have been dying to enforce this because we always had the right to vote for our own um, person to go and speak on behalf of our family in international affairs and to make sure that the foreigners do not infringe on our liberty, but these seats have been empty. And so that is what we need to be uh, calling on Jesus about, because we need our president and vice president candidates so that we can do our vote under the United States so that we can put these foreigners back in check. As long <laughs>
And then I, they made it clear to them, well, why didn't them, our ladies make it more obvious that, you know, it is? I said, how much more obvious? They didn't need to make a distinction about the United States the United States of America, because the United States always existed in terms of a terminology, but the United States of America is what we brought into the whole. Right. So the preamble shows you that. That's well. right. That's right. Now, um, and as why did they bring them into the whole? 1774, did you mention? Because they came and said, would you please help us? Yes. Yes. This is and this is right in the congressional record. This is not and he's making this up. All right. Actually, um I think you can go on the R E Bay Publications website under Sister Standard on Law and there is a letter to the people of Great Britain from the modern Europeans over here where they are lodging a complaint against the treatment that they are receiving here, not from the Lord here. But see, they were double crossed because they would remember now. <laughs> I like to say this because modern Europeans would tell you, well, uh, you know, we came over here on the Mayflower and the Santa Maria. Well, yes, and and they try to make it get people feel bad because they we think we don't know where we came from. We came from here. We didn't come from nowhere else. But here's something to reflect on. The people that came over on the Mayflower and the Santa Maria and the Good Ship Jesus, those people were taken out of the prison. Those are your murderers, rapists, and thieves. All right? So if you came over on the Mayflower, the Santa Maria, and the Good Ship Jesus, your ancestors were thieves and murderers and rapists. And debt, and people who were constantly in debt, you know, debtors, debtors' prison. So that's not something, I mean, that's your history. But don't be trying to throw that at me as if, you know, I don't know where I came from. I know exactly where I came from. I came from planet Earth. All right, and, and my people is everywhere. And don't try to chop us up and segment us because, for me, it doesn't work. If you are highly melanated and you've got the features, we are family. I know that, and I do not say otherwise. So, uh, you know, we as a people, we need to recognize you, you, you don't come from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is a corporation. You don't come from Jamaica. Jamaica is a corporation. You don't come from Trinidad and Tobago, okay? Trinidad and Tobago, that is a dead giveaway that you're talking about a corporation. You do not come from Barbados, that is a corporation. You do not come from the United States or the United States of America. Both of those are corporate constructs. This is American soil, but you are not an American. America is not a nationality, all right? So and you, you, you're not from Germany, German, Germany, or German, or Italy, or, or Great Britain, or France. All of those are corporations, and they function as a corporation that encompasses the entire family interest. Al America is a is a is a dialect of Al um, what about Africa? <laughs> Africa is a dialect of a maxim. Uh, but our construct that is supposed to be going around the world and interfacing on behalf of the Moors on American soil is the United States. But we don't have anybody speaking on our behalf or doing inter international, actually not doing business on our behalf. These seats are empty, and these people cannot speak on behalf of the United States, nor can they sit in the seat of the United States, because when you sit in the seat of the United States, you're speaking on behalf of Al Morocco. Because he is a governor of a union state, and he can become a citizen in order to do that, but he can't sit over here. He never has. No, no one of European has ever sat over here. Uh, well, I don't know. I have to do a little bit more research. There's a picture that looks, makes Lincoln look like he might be Asiatic, but I have to do a little bit more research because 
they have so muddied up the waters that you got to, like, really go into the archives and dig around to determine who is who and what is what because it's not clear anymore. Some things are clear once you have some teeth, but, you know, when it comes to, you know, from my understanding, the last president of this was uh, Benjamin Banneker. That's, that's my understanding. Right. Uh, right. They up uh, yeah, I was. They only they <laughs> I had to we're, we're we're talking about we have to look at the confidence of Congress because Chief Ju- Chief Justice ben- Benjamin Banner for Bay, which they took the Bay off, of course. He was the Chief Justice and he was teaching the modern European uh, government he fell under here, right? Exactly, he fell under there, the Supreme Court, and he was the Chief Justice. So we only had President elect uh, of the Congress. Uh, for one year, that's that's it. It wasn't no big deal thing. And just to say that, um, uh, with that with that being what it is, we have uh, I think eleven of them. We saw them together, like seventeen listed in the books here, and you know you can find them anywhere. This information is is the age. So they don't speak of those presidents because they are really literally speaking from their own position. That's what makes it so sad that we keep trying to slide up under their jurisdiction. They're telling you the first president is George Washington. They're talking about their own stuff. That does refer to them. But I wanted to add this one thing because someone asked about what is Africa. 101, elementary teaching here. And it says in here, question number 30, what is the nationality of roots? So you talking about they talk about roots, the Moabites. That's your roots, the Moabites, your mama. Um, and it says, I know here they changed it says Ruth was a Moabite, but if you read the Bible, it says Moabite, and you know what it says, a Moabite, too. Moabite is a Moabite, period. And then it says, yeah, what is the modern name for the Moabite? Listen carefully. What is the modern name? You know that you, that Ruth was a Yahshua's great, great, great grandmother, and the Can- Canaanite, uh, I'm not Canaanite, uh, 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 Canaanite Moabite blood. So let's start again. So, what is the nationality of root? Moabite. Yes, right? Here. What is the modern name for Moabite? Moroccan. All right? What is the Moroccan Empire? Northwest Alaska. What is the modern name for Alaska? Africa. So, who asked about Africa? And this I also wanted to say, I mean, I meant to mention this before our intro because some people who do not study say that we don't know what we're talking about because we say it's a Mexican, we say it's a miracle, we say it's, you know, Afro, Northwest Mexican, Northwest America, Northwest Africa. Because they don't understand. That's why references to history is what you must have. And you've got to be able to spit that right out or refer to it, go to the reference, so that, because you already understand. It's the same thing. And it before him was La Moria. La Moria means land of the Moor. Everybody knows it was called La Moria, but they don't know what that means. It means La the Moria Moor. That's a French version of it, if you will. Okay? All right? So I just wanted to add that because his brother asked about Africa. So that's what, uh, it's crazy, man. What you can't understand what people temples can say they're not all of that. And it's right there. It's right there. Uh, all right, so. <laughs> Look, uh, you all need to be up here doing a class as well. It, it just requires a little bit of studying. I want to be able to sit down, rest my feet, and listen to some of you present some information because there's so much information 
to be presented and talked about and analyzed and discussed so that we all can have a clear comprehension of who is who and what is what. Islam? So with that, I guess we're going to read the preamble, and then we will be closing out. So get your constitution ready. Get your constitutions out. Huh? Who was? Who? Yes. Uh, you talk about about the war. Uh, we did no uh, bloodlines and all that. So we were talking about that day the full time as far as, you know, we still be in the world, this, this land. So, the, the what of this thing? Well, you, you were never royal. For noble. But that, that would be noble. So, okay. So, we want to uh, nominate and for the year of who is going to be given away to the right as well. Well, uh, first of all, amalgamate, you got to be you got to be clear on what that means. See? Amalgamating the see people think that there was some there when when an Asiatic son hooks up with a modern European daughter, people have been mentally conditioned to believe that there's some interbreeding going on. There the only interbreeding that took place was in the laboratory. That's it. Because they took the DNA and they mixed it and they created something. All right? What is going on between the Asiatic sun and the modern European is absolute trickery. That's it. Because people do not understand true biology. The w- women come here with the eggs already inside of them. That is why the nationality of the child is based on the mother. So if a mod- if a mo- Asiatic son has sex, with a modern European daughter, that child is still a modern European. And it doesn't matter if the Asiatic son wants to claim them or not, it doesn't change their nationality. Henry claimed Elizabeth, but Elizabeth was still a modern European. It doesn't change their nationality. Your nationality cannot be changed unless it comes from the great God Allah, and the great God Allah is her. It is her. She is the only one that is building in the dark without tools. All right? That's her. She is the great God of Allah. She came here with those eggs. The only thing that a son might be doing is applying an electrical charge that starts the division of the egg. But there is no transferring of blood because there is no blood. That's a biology. That's a biology. Exactly. How many people took biology when they was in um, high school? Took biology in high school? Now, let me ask you, because I know I saw this same video, and I'm sure they still showing it today. They show you this little egg and a gazillion sperm that women are to mix with the egg, right? And the sperm supposedly penetrates the egg and the tail breaks off, right? Was there any blood? Oh. But if we had a camera, David could show you the true size of the egg compared to the sperm, and you would see that there is no way in hell that that little tiny sperm did anything to that humongous egg, <laughs> but apply an electrical charge. And can that I is. and can I ask something because from because like you said, that is a biology lesson that is a fact and it's true. We need to just accept it. Not being sent to anybody down or like any you know. Then that monster is all that there is. Right. It's so it's so intriguing that there's 
uh, 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 what you call secret society, secret society called my son, and yet you want to rebuke it, and they want you to rebuke it, and they want you to think it's spooky, and they want you to, you know, ooh, it's luminous, oh, it's scary. That's what they want you to do, and all of that. But you need to accept the facts of these things and of biology. So if that can be accepted, now we can move on because with that, with that being clear, now you will truly understand the power of the mother because she's so powerful, although she doesn't know it herself, that's why she has to wake up, that she does what is called imprinting. Oh, uh, you don't do imprinting, no. The baby don't just like you because that's what she built it to look like. Yeah. You think it's because you transfer blood. Blood is not transferred in the sperm. Right. So that's an impossibility for you to think. It's an illusion. So then what happens is you, you automatically must have a greater respect for womanhood when you actually know what is being done. Right. And that she's going to have five children in the first two, three will just like you because you are on her mind. The last two might look like the guy down the street because that's on his mind and he doesn't have to have sex with him. Now that's one of the powerful stuff right here, isn't it? Now, now look. She's the builder. That's right. She's now, the builder. You, and you have to understand yeah. that there is a war going on. All right? There's a war going on. These modern Europeans, have you noticed that modern European daughters are hooking up with Asiatic sons like never, ever before? It wasn't too long that jungle fever was real. A modern European daughter would get her ass whooped if she even acted like she was messing around with an Asiatic son. It wasn't too long ago that jungle fever was real. Today, jungle fever is a thing of the past. You got a modern European daughters hooking up with Asiatic sons, and it's not that you are not wonderful because you are. But this is strategy for them. They are trying to steal the vast estate. And they know that if they can get you to claim their offspring, you are going to transfer the Moorish nation onto the modern European child. And they are going to walk off into the sunset with our vast estate. This is strategy. It is not that you are not beautiful and wonderful, son, because you are. But this is not about how beautiful and wonderful you are. This is about how can I get my hands on that vast estate? It's wrong. <laughs> yes, yes. And, they, and, and sometimes it looks like they're sucking the life out of you. Like, you know, I'm I'm just saying, I'm I'm just saying. But they they will keep you around long enough to get you to transfer onto their children anything of the Moorish nation. And unfortunately that is what is happening. And that is what the prophet means when he says we do not wish to amalgamate with the pale skinned nations of Europe because it becomes an issue of nationality and it becomes, the waters become muddy in terms of the birthright and who is who and what is what. Because just because you got a little tan don't mean that you are a more, honey. Let me tell you, I don't care how light or dark you are, you need to go and check back with your mother and your grandmother and your great-grandmother if you can because it's not about the complexion. It's about where you came from. And fact, I'm, I mean, I don't. I, I ask myself, you know, my grandmother is. My grandmother looked like she. They imported her from Australia. She's so heavily melanated, and she looked just like the people of Australia. So I'm cool. But I had to ask myself, what would my feeling be if she was a lily white woman <laughs> of European descent? All right. What would I, I had to ask myself that? And my answer was. I would have to roll with my nationality, whatever it is. And that's what, it, that's what it's supposed to be. It doesn't matter if you're Asiatic or modern European. You need to roll with whatever your nationality is. Islam? So with that, uh, who's doing the invocation now? Oh, we got to read. Hold on. We got to read the preamble. And then we're going to read the preamble. All right. So everybody who is reading the preamble, get your papers out. And on the count of three, 
because they were already here also because we're all family. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's why Michelle Obama, when she had her naturalization program, she mentioned some of the truth. I'm telling you, Michelle Obama and him, they dropped some jewels on you to help you, but if you're not studying, they're going over your head. And nobody can bring you. can bring them off the water, but you can't make them drink. And so it was a test. That's why the prophet said, when you get a president, an Asiatic president or Asiatic vice president, like that, like that, that's a sign because from those times, they can tell exactly where the laws are. Have they come? It's just like reading the secret teachings of the Brotherhood of East, Chapter 5. The sages meet to see just how far man has come and, ju- and just, right? So, so, same thing. They p- put all this stuff in action and you still didn't make action because you're still not conscious enough about who you are and what's going on to do so. So it kind of test. It was a test at the same time to see where the people were. And they slowed you down with putting Obama in there, making you think that that was, again, but that's all right, because nothing that anybody does should have perfected the truth if you have it with you. So I, I said I'd like to say that um, if you don't know what the players are, right, then you go and get real caught up in it, and then people call the state's constitution the constitution. I mean, it's just to break it all down. You need to read it yourself. Um, but there was one other thing that I wanted to say about it, and I forgot. Oh, the seven articles in the ten bill of rights because of the ten seven most influential plans here, and the ten total together. 
This is a spiritual document. One of the most spiritual documents out. You would not know that, would you? It's based on the principles of spiritual principles. This right here is one of the most uh, religious documents that are out and has been out for, uh, they say it's the longest running document, but then they say it's only 200 years old because the principles in it are, are ancient. It is. It's only been written down for about two, three hundred years. But it doesn't mean that it's function within our hearts. Within our hearts, right. The con that 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 the love from peace, freedom, and justice principles are used in here. And that is in the preamble and you're getting ready to read them. You won't recognize them unless you study that when it says domestic tank of uh, tranquility, one on me, peace, one on me, uh, when they say domestic uh, to ensure domestic um, freedom, uh, not no domestic. Uh, oh, domestic tranquility. That's peace. That's true. Right. Because it starts at home. Domestic tranquility. That's true. You know, like do the study on this preamble. You get me say it out of your own mouth, and you figure out where love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice rests in it. Because we're not just jabbing out that, but if people don't want to believe that, fine. But this is the document that you told to enforce because this is the law of this land. Meaning anybody violating, you said it back. The people are supposed to enforce this. Not them. And they tell you, hey, guess what? We made a law yesterday. You know, you can't walk your dog on Tuesday, you know, all that crazy. Whatever the law is. Isn't that supposed to go for that? Anyway. Yeah. So, let's go back to the Transmitter of it. That's where you should be. 